This one is one that I just I just recently built, and uh, it's uh, it works on the principle of a time difference of arrival or TDOA. And basically, it's got two elements that uh, that fold out. Uh, these are both dipoles here, so one active and, and one um, uh, counterpoise. And then I've got a little chip on here that basically is working right now. It's a, it's like a it's a pick chip, but it's basically working just like a five 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 timer. It's just switching one of the output lines. High and low, high and low at, at uh, an audio frequency like 500 hertz, and using uh, some diodes, some pin RF pin diodes here and here. As that 500 hertz switches, when it goes high, that basically enables this antenna, and when it goes low, it disables this antenna and enables this antenna. The the principle is by switching between these two an antennas, um, it looks at the phase, the RF phase, uh, the phase of the RF wave coming into the signal, and by switching between these two, if they happen to be equidistant from the transmitter you're not going to get uh, any change in, in listening from this location to this location. However, if they've got a different location from the transmitter, as you switch back and forth, it's going to impart that 500 hertz tone onto the, onto the uh, FM signal and you're going to actually pick it up on the FM receiver. So, so what you can kind of hear is, as I, I think it's in the room, it's not doing so well, but you, what you'll find when it's a little, uh, I think without so many reflections, is when you're like this, you'll hear that tone, and it tends to kind of fade away. This one is getting more multipath as it comes in, and then it gets stronger when you go this way. So, um, although it's, it, it'll work a little bit better outside, but generally the idea is you kind of swing this thing around, and when your antennas are equidistant, that 500 hertz tone goes away. So you just kind of listen for that tone, adjust till it's, till it's gone, and now you know that your antennas are equidistant, and you can you can hopefully head in the T in the direction of the T. But there's one problem with equidistant, and that is what? Both ways. Both ways, right. So you don't know if it's this way or this way. Mm. So um, one way, to, the, the best way to, to beat that is to kind of move 90 degrees, take another bearing, and hopefully it's going to tell you it's either this way or this way, or you get a little closer. Um, but there is one mod that you can make to this that I'm, that's the next thing I'm going to work on, and that's why I'm not using a, a pick chip, but I'm, or I'm not using a 555 timer, but I'm actually using a pick chip, is I'm going to look at the, uh, the I'm going to feed the audio from the receiver back into the chip so I can look at the phase at the time that I switch. And if I notice that the phase goes up when I switch, I'll know that this one's getting closer. And I know if it goes down when I switch, I know that this one's getting further away. So I can sample the phase at the time I switch and I can tell which one of these is closer. Hopefully that'll mean I'll uh, put two LEDs on here and it'll tell you left or right as you're swinging. So over here it'll say it's to the left, then both lights will turn off, and then over here it'll say to the right. So that'll get rid of that ambiguity on the on the direction, which will make this thing uh, a little bit more useful for for not passing passing through. And then my other plan with uh, hopefully going forward with this is to realize uh, people have mentioned that what they'll use is two of these things in their car, um, one pair going left and right, and so they have a light in their car that tells them whether it's to the left or the right, and another pair in the car going front to back, so it tells them front to back. So you get four LEDs in your car as you're driving around, and it'll just tell you is it front, back, left, or right. You know, sometimes you'll see two of them. And if you can imagine, that's going to be pretty straightforward to just drive until you see that you've passed it. Now make a right turn, especially with our nice gridded streets we have out here. Uh, it's going to make it pretty easy to hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, once once I get it built up, to uh, to drive to it. And this is, um, well, I'll go a little bit more. The other thing that I'm realizing is instead of having four antennas like this, that's kind of overkill because I'm, I don't need to use these two antennas. I can just have three antennas in this orientation and, and do the same thing. So I can do left, right with these two and front, back with these. And then I kind of realized if I, if I switch it more like this into a triangle pattern, I can actually get six different directions off of it. Um, so hopefully that's going to be my next goal is I'm going to build one of these with three antennas and six LEDs in a, in a pseudo circle and, and see how well that's going to work. Let me, let me bring up one more point about, about this TDOA. And that is um, that it is not at all affected by signal strength. So where you have other transmitter uh, direction finding stuff, as you're getting closer, your signal gets stronger now to the S meter is full scale everywhere you turn. This is not at all affected by signal strength. So you can be right here, uh, right next to a 50 watt transmitter, and you'll still get that phase um, adjustment or, or tone going present or away, regardless of the power. So that's, that's another benefit of having something like this in your arsenal, that if you have something that's too powerful for your S meter, you can switch to this. Um, and this kind of leads into, um, this is kind of a, a precursor or a, or a dumbed down version of a, of a Doppler direction finder.